Ladies and gentlemen, the podcast that changed the world, the podcast that changed everything. With you, I was going to know your girlfriend's trending topic, the doodle, the doodle, your most negro. Con el golito lindo de la radio. Y Jason David, que lo que... Y del de lado el menor, a.k.a. el rompevieja y el matagorda. ¡La voz de Dios! Yeah, all the way in the back. So today we're coming up with a topic that um, has definitely impacted the tri-state area. It's a topic where we see, unfortunately, the violence in our streets. And um, by misconfusion, what many can agree to, um, we've lost the life of, of a very young man at the age of 15, correct? Yeah, 15. Um, and um, we're going to just open up to the floor as, what are your thoughts on the situation, how everything played out? You know, the videos have, um, have came out. Um, the before and after, uh, the situation, the names of the individuals who committed this. Um, but most importantly, we want to send a big prayer and our condolences to the family of Junior. And um, yeah, gentlemen, let's start with Jay. Well, to be honest with you, my opinion and what I think um, about the situation, it's a tragic situation. Unfortunately, you know, like I said, we lost a young uh, individual. We didn't even get to see what kind of talent he would have probably brought the world. Um you know, big prayers to his family and whatnot. But también, let's let's if we go by based on what we're seeing and based on the videos and whatnot, um, it all leads to pretty much showing that he was killed over nothing. Um, they're claiming a mistake. They're claiming um, gang related situations. It's a lot of a lot of stories. We would never find out what the real one is. Because we weren't there, we don't. We're not those six men that was were, that killed him, nor are we the person that died for us to know what the true story was. But um, it's just it's tragic to know that someone lost a life over, you know, what could have been prevented. Thanks. Now you know you, we speak about you know the six gentlemen that um that uh, committed this uh this act, but I want to open to the floor. You know, what responsibility do you give? To the owners of the store, because I know there's a petition out now that everybody wants the store closed. So now I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a business owner, and how would have you conducted yourself, and do you think you would have had in a different approach, uh, Egal? Um, I mean, honestly speaking, I'm gonna say, um, unfortunately, I come from where this event has happened. Um, I came into the Bronx. You can, um, you can tell that. Um, I mean, I can say by myself. The Bronx is a pretty rough place to live in. Um, and unfortunately, what happened to this kid is, I'm not gonna say, it could have been avoided as being a store owner, put myself in the shoes. I know I would have took the risk that if I see this young man um, hopping through my counter, um, scared as he was, unfortunately, yes, it's a risk for my business. It's a risk on my life. But sometimes we have to learn how to um, take a step a little bit further and let's not just think about what's gonna, what can happen to my business. Let me just think about this young man's life. Because like we said, we don't know what talent this young man could have brought to, to the world. And yo, honestly speaking, let's say in the near future, this kid would have been like an excellent baseball player, excellent basketball player. And he's like, yo, come to the store or owner or go to his family. And listen, yo, look, your father saved my life. I'm grateful for this. And honestly speaking, the, the, ro the world does move around money. Who knows, maybe that kid could have helped the store owner make his, his business bigger. And honestly, it's a very um, sad loss, the fact that literally a child, a 15-year-old, you know, whatever it was, either gang-related or anything else, I don't think he honestly deserved that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I think we could all agree that we don't believe that, the you know, he deserved it in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, you know, I think also is, you know, what situation can you have placed yourself? You know, and I know that there's a confusion, quote-unquote, about some video that was leaked a very long time ago. Um that there is a gentleman who looks a lot like him, who is actually currently trending right now, right, on Facebook. Yes, he has over he like 50, trending, yes. yeah, 50,000 uh, 50, views right now. Um, but, Jason, I want to ask you, you know, do you see Hola. how this could happen in our community? Why is it happening in our community? And what is it that could be done to avoid situations like this? I don't think there's anything that can be done to be, avoid situations like this, to be honest. This is gonna keep happening. Maybe not as bad or as tragic like this, but it's gonna keep happening. I don't think you're gonna be able to stop it, like ever. So I don't know. Like it's really sad. As far as the store owner goes, I kind of understand the store owner's point of view, but I also see what he was trying to do. 
Because if you have somebody running into my business just trying to hop over my counter in the society we live in, I'm not just going to let you do you. So I'm going to be defensed about it. But I don't know. This is like really, really sad. Oh, can, this is can, can, right, well, on. let me let me just say, so, you know, I've, 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 I've been thinking about the entire situation, how everything played out, you know, and we see in the video how the gentleman, uh, the, the young, the young, the young boy goes into the the store. And the first time that he goes into the store, you know, he jumps over this counter. Um, and like you said, I think as a business owner, if I see somebody jump over my counter, I can understand um, how if somebody explains the situation before he jumps over my counter, how I might have thought differently. You know, the first time around, I think, to be honest, I think I would have had the same reaction that the owner had, you know, because somebody just jumped over my counter without my permission where I have the money of the location where I'm making my business. So in some sort of point, I'm, I'm going to feel some sort of defensive. Like, hey, listen, I don't want you in my store because you just jumped over my counter. You know, was there time to explain that to the owner? We don't know. The video doesn't show any that's, audio. That's so we, gonna, we can't yeah. see that, you know. Um, now the second time around, I think the second time around is what really bothers me. That's the fact where he fucked up. Where, yeah, where you where you see a child who is obviously hurt, who is obviously in need of help, you know, and you at that point, out. yeah, and at that point for you to kick him out, I think that's where the big mistake is made. So, you know, I think you know, I understand how sometimes we don't want to involve ourselves in danger or anything like that. We might have to worry not only by ourselves, but maybe our loved ones and family and whatnot. But when you see a person, I don't even want to see a young man. I just say a person. When you see a person who is hurt and in need and is asking for your help, and it's not even asking for your help, oh, I could survive without you. It's like, I need your help right now to survive. I think that's where the point I think we need to make the choice as to like whether we help or not. And I think it's pretty obvious when somebody's like kind of hanging on to their life. And who knows what those five minutes made a difference, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what really gets to me. Um, and listen, the streets... Do I think it's gonna get better? I hope so. You know, I, I I hope that one day. You know, but what I am gonna say is that I want parents to kind of also look at themselves, and um and understand that a lot of these kids are falling into these streets because they, they don't feel younger at that. Yeah, but the thing is, kids are falling into these streets because they don't know where to go. Yeah, they don't have they don't somebody do. to rely on. You know what I mean? A lot of these kids who are joining these gangs are joining these gangs because that, that gang feels like home. And when it starts feeling like home, it starts becoming the meaning of your life. And it's very difficult for you to ask somebody to leave the meaning of their life, whether you agree with it or not. You understand what I'm trying to say? And it's 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 hard for you to leave something that you actually believe in. And I think that's what's 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 the big issue here. These kids are actually believing in the life that is lived on these streets. This life of of rage. This life of they, of uh, I am about it because yeah, that's really the word that's out there. You know, I'm about that life. They 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 um unfortunately these young men, I'm gonna say they believe that this is the right way of going. They find like. The, per the what they're doing has a purpose and it has a meaning and honestly speaking I've always liked to told myself you don't know what's happening inside the box until you take a step outside from it and even though we don't re they don't realize how bad is what they're doing once they like take two to three minutes outside from what their position is is where you actually acknowledge what's going on so I, I I'm and my the whole si the whole store situation to me it's a little different um because after hearing so again, these are these are he said she said because we don't really know the real story. But from what I was told, the kid's from the block. He lives up the street. He goes to the store consistently. And for a kid that I see consistently, I know his mom. Um, I know that maybe he's not a kid for that, that that would seem like, oh, Ryan's mom he gets into trouble when I cause I was like, people act differently. But from the story that are being told, the owner knew the kid. He knew that that he was not, you know, not a, not a, too much of a troublemaker. I mean, kids always get in trouble, but for a kid to run into your store and you you see him, you know his mom, and for you to just like, all right, just take him out, take him out, instead of like, hold on, wait a minute, something's going on here, you know, put put that that's where that's where my mentality is. Like, I I want to like, I want to be able to have the logic. Like, listen, someone explain to me what how, could he have thought differently at the moment. Like, I've seen this kid a hundred times. He's always around. Um, what I have to say is that we got to think about it like this. When we are in a situation that is so high speed, like that situation happened. Because that happened in a span of five minutes. It was, it was literally five minutes. He went, he went into the store. They grabbed him out. He went back in. It was five minutes. The whole situation. You see somebody run in. Hop your counter. The first thing you're doing is defense. That's the first thing. 
we don't know if you we don't know if he said something to the owner like oh they're after me or they're trying to kill me or they're trying we don't we don't know that because we don't hear no audio right so the beginning part i'm like shit all right get out get out of my store because i don't i don't want nothing to do with it the second part, well, the middle part, when the other dude goes out and sees something, because mm-hmm. he saw them, like, stabbing them and shit. That's a whole other level. Make a noise, he do something, inside. throw water, throw hot water, throw soda, throw a bottle, do something, so they can be like, shit, they saw us, we gotta go. You know what I mean? He ran inside. He panicked. He panicked. People come at cops all the time because they're panicking, boom, pull trigger, nigga dead. Or person that, you know what I mean, and the cops they defend themselves. People not defending these people, and I understand. But the last part is the last, the part that I think is just you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Like you see him, he came in bleeding, like he was just straight up bleeding. They punch her in the artery, bro. The kid ran two blocks, bleeding, with your cuts in his leg. Stabbed in his body, stabbed in his neck, bleeding out. He ran two blocks. Two blocks. So that's what you could have carried him, take him in the car, and it would have been like this. So you would have called somebody while he was at your store instead of kicking him out. That could have made a no, difference. I understand that, but you got to understand the panic. Because the moment you walk in, and you're running in, and you just hopping, you hopping into my counter. I'm panicking too. We're both in a panic situation. You know what I mean? Cause just think about it, you know, <clears throat> you don't, you don't, exp- you don't, we don't see in everyday life where somebody just walks into a store, jumps over a counter, and says, "Yo, listen, I'm, I'm here for my life." If somebody jumps over your counter, you're expecting this guy's trying to rob me. You yeah. understand what I'm trying to say? That's your and like Damien said, you know, you go into an automatic defense because now you're protecting what is yours, you know. And yes, you, you know, you kick them out. You see people coming in, but reality is kind of like, hey, listen, I don't know who these kid is running for. You know what I mean? I, ha- I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Like and like Damien um just uh, just stated, you know, I think the issue is the second part around when he comes back in and he's hurt and nothing is done. I think that's what really hurts me. And you know, and they have this entire petition where you know they want to close down the store, and I don't think closing down the store is really gonna. Do anything, you know what I mean? I think I think we need to reach out to the parents. We need to reach out to these kids who are part of these gangs. We need to reach out to um, somebody who can have a difference and kind of convince these kids, like, hey, listen, this really isn't the way to go. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because what what does closing the store really do for us? Those those kids are still on the street who believe in the gangs. The violence is still out here. You know what I mean? I think what we need to do is really like sit back, and especially the parents need to sit back. You know, and and my thing with parenting is. I feel like no one is taught how to be a parent. We kind of just go off of the assumption of the way that we were raised. And reality is time have changed. The, the gang level and the violence level that there is today was not the same 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You know, and, and, that, and there needs to be an adjustment. I think parents need to be educated on certain, um, uh, certain, uh, situations. certain situations. What's going on in our community. Exactly. Like, it's, it's simple. Like a guy was there. And I think the com- the commissioner or something of the like the yeah. town or the city of the Bronx or whatever was there, and he was telling them, "Bro, what are I you grew up do? here. Things I grew have up thirty years old. The big, I grew up here when I was young. The YMCA, all that shit was free. I could just walk in there, play basketball instead of being in the streets. And I gotta pay a hundred dollars. When they to get closed in. it down, he was still young. He said, "I was in the streets because there was nothing else to do." There was nothing else to do. If there was nothing else to do and your parents are working, not 9 to 5, because you know our parents do not work a 9 to 5. They work like 9 to 12. And they're never home. What are you going to do? I'm going to hang out with my boys. Uh, Me and my boys are going to create a clique. And then we're going to create a clique. We see a bigger clique, a.k.a. gangs. And then we create, we jump into that because that's what we know. I'm with my boys all the time. Me and my boys, we all jumped into that. and We different. Like, me and my brother, me and Negro right here, we were in West New York, here in New Jersey, and there was stuff around us, but we understood, like, bro, that's just crazy. We're not trying to jump on that. Well, I, 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 I want to disagree a little bit on you, because I know I, I had some sort of uh, pressure when I was when it was just me and my mother living there, and you guys were living in the yard. Um, I got jumped into doggies. I fought in to get into doggies. You know what I'm trying to say? And once again, it was more of a sense of having having protection. I was 
brand new to the country, basically, because I didn't remember when I was younger. You know, um, I'm part of the bilingual crew, the bilingual kids, and that was the only defense that I had. That was the only people who I had who had my back. So, you know, and then when you come to a situation where somebody's trying to fight you and these are the only guys that are defending you, nine out of ten times, if you don't have somebody at home, you're going to fall into that. So, you know, I, you know, we, we, we could say a lot about the, the guys who were at the, at the corner store. We could say a lot about them. But reality is, I think we could say more about the parents who not, and I'm not saying like junior's parents. I'm saying more the other general, sick. Yeah, parent, parents in general. Because you know, it's, it's the same thing you're saying. I mean, me and Jason, we're brothers. We grew up in what's considered the core horrible part of Newark. Okay, if you went to Shabazz considerably, you were going to a bad school. I literally lived around the corner from Seth Boyan. You went to Seth Boyan, bro, they didn't know who you were. They'll slap you around, they beat the shit out you, and take whatever you had. And it's like, you picked and choose as a young person what you wanted to do. We decided, we'll go outside, we'll go to the park. Literally, 440 was a building where nobody wanted to live at because... If you stood in the, in the wrong moment in time in front of that building, you probably got shot. And how a many gunshots? Something. Yeah, and how many gunshots did we hear consistently? Every but again, other night. But again, it was like it was like a movie nowadays because we'll sit in the fucking window waiting for some shit to happen. Like that's how that's how it got. And it's like you pick and choose as a young person who you want to deal with. Because okay, my parents worked, my parents did everything they had to do, but then when it came down to us not having nothing to do, we chose what to do. Now, some people, they, they, they get influenced by, by nothing, really. But then that's when you have to have that conversation as a parent. All right, this is what goes on in life. This is what I expect from you. And listen, if you don't do this, then this happens. I think that's pretty much where Look, the conversation needs to be had. When, when you say, like, this is what's going to happen... You can't say it like that, though. Dude, put that graphic no, image no, in their no, head. No, no. What, what I mean, you can't say it like that, is because kids rebel. Kids rebel. Okay. But what I'm saying is, like, you tell them, did you see what happened to this kid? Did you see where the sixth dude ended up? Did you see what happened 10 years ago, 4 years ago, 5 years ago, with different situations that is not related to Junior? Unfortunately, Junior, rest in peace. What I'm saying is, you put it in their head saying that that is not the right way to go. You can have your friends and they can back you up. But you don't have to go do stuff. Like these six dudes, seven dudes, eight dudes, how many dudes there was in the car, in the house, planning it in the other crew. It doesn't really matter. Like if you're involved in it, if you're part of it, even if you weren't there, if you're part of it and you're like in another state, Guess what? You're part of it. That's on you. Well, on behalf of the Al Oscuro, TV Al Negro Al Oscuro, we like to send our our prayers to the family of Junior. And um, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm not too big on the rest in peace. I think just you know, live and enjoy wherever you are. And um, and for those who are listening and maybe are part of some sort of a gang or some sort of group association, or association, you, want to call you are, it. exactly. Um, just keep this in mind, you know, the results, you know, the the mistake that was made and I guess the major mistake that was made in taking somebody else's life. But this was Alos Curva Negro, your girlfriend's Sunday topic, and I am El Negro. Jay. Jason Navi. Oh, I'm good, Manuel. Just call me the voice today. <laughs>